And of course, uh, here in East London this morning, as uh, we take a look at what's been happening as we lead up to the November 1st poll. And interestingly, uh, this particular metro, the Buffalo City Metro, in uh, the 2016 election, only 55.93% of uh, voters actually turned out to vote in that local government election, uh, which is very interesting, means almost half of the residents in this metro did not show up. They did not bother to vote. And what does that say in and of itself? But uh, getting on and uh, perhaps uh, just to run through uh, some of the more uh, pertinent issues, according to the IEC's website, 26 parties um, and 21 independents uh, will actually be contesting uh, the local government elections for 2021. So it's going to be interesting to see whether any changes are actually brought about in terms of the mandate given to the elected representatives mm -hmm. by the people of Buff Buffalo City Metro. So uh, just getting back uh, to some of the issues and people are talking about um, the changes that have been made in this particular uh, metro. But I did say, I, before I get to that, I just wanted to find out about the use of consultants in this metro and why uh, that is so high, uh, the second highest in all of South Africa. And uh, Mr. Pagati, let me start with you. Why are you making use of consultants when people are actually earning salaries? Well, uh, I, I do not believe that uh, that statement is entirely true. We have a very capable administration here that runs the affairs of this municipality. The usage of consultants is not necessarily a day-to-day -day occurrence. It happens as and when a special skill is needed. So the fact that we, we use consultants for every administrative function is not entirely correct. I did not say you are using them for every administrative function. I asked, why are you paying so much as a metro for the use of consultants? So what exactly do you use them for, Mr. Pag Mr. Pagati? Well, if there is a specialized skill that is needed from a consultant, that service is acquired, but we have a very capable administration that runs the affairs of this municipality. And that the statement that presupposes that the municipality is run by consultant is not true. No, I, I, I never said that. What did you say? Um, I am saying you are making use of consultants that are very costly. I did not even specify what they are being used for. I am simply saying that according uh, to the Auditor General's report, and this is the Auditor General stating that, not me, uh, that the uh, Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality spent 12.3 million rand on two consultants at least. Let's talk to those two. Are you aware of them? I'm not aware of those two consultants and who they are. But the fact of the matter, as I've said, as and when the need arises, a consultant would be, would be uh, employed to provide a special, uh, specialized uh, uh, skill that we may not be having in the municipality. So but give me then, an example but of then that. It does not necessarily, like legal services. I beg your pardon? Like, like legal services. Legal services. Yes, as and when we need uh, external opinion on legal matters, we go then and, 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 and procure the services outside the municipality. And how often do you need to do that? We don't do that very often. So how come as the bill is so the high? Arises. It depends on what the council decides because this arises out of council debates. So the council decides on this. So let's hear uh, from those represented in council. Uh, uh, Mr. Tutu, uh, let's start with you. Uh, in terms of the use of consultants in this municipality, what have you used them for? What are those specialized skills that you needed to bring consultants in for? Ma'am, uh, uh, we've been advocating. We've been, as an opposition party, we've been crying in this municipality for five years. Uh, the wasteful expenditure on consultants, on <coughs> things like uh, as uh, the mayor talking about illegally. We must sound uh, who is an advocate, who is in the municipality, employed by the municipality. But uh, the ruling party always like to hire people from outside. I am hearing that uh, it is the decision of the council. It's a matter of uh, majority because 
in the council, if we oppose the use of people from outside, then we vote on something, then the ruling party will overcome us or, or dominate because there are many. Yeah, we've been crying for a long time for this wasteful expenditure in the municipality. Mr. Simani, in terms of the consultants that have been brought in, Mr. Pagati says it was needed because you do not have those skills within council. Why don't you have those skills within council when you actually do have salaries being paid to people who should have those skill sets? Okay, thanks, Mr. Um, I think, uh, first of all, why this mess? because the ruling party is using the consultants that are linked to them so that they find their political programs. Um, the reason why we are, we are in this mess is because the ANC continuously in the council behave like hooligans when you talk serious issues of the city. Uh, the electorate must be aware that when they vote the ANC, they are not voting leaders. <coughs> they are voting chair leaders who, came, who come in the council and, and stand in, 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 on top of the tables when we are discussing serious matters and howling the leaders here. So some of the questions that you are asking, you are correctly to, answer, to ask the mayor directly because he's the accounting officer of this city, of this municipality. But he's not providing the answers that you are, you are asking simply because this city is run by people who are in, in fights, who are, in, who are factionally, and who are not concerned about the issues of this city. Now, we won't be able to provide you with direct answers because each and every time we sit in this council, we are not provided with answers. So you're not provided with answers, but you are privy to the uh, reports, the financial reports of the city, because that can't <coughs> be hidden. And uh, whether all of the documentation has been provided or not, there will be some sort of ordered outcome. And it, it hasn't been a great uh, bit of a regression in this particular metro. So let's talk about that. And how does this impact <coughs> on service delivery, Ms. King? Okay, um, when we talk on the consultant issue first, we have about 4.5 million um, that we would spend annually um, for skill shortages. And skill shortages in the regard of ICT, uh, we can see we have a billing mess in, in because of the ICT skills that is not in the city. What is actually happening with the card deployment is that you will find people that are mismatched to the actual post that they are in. Um, they don't have the necessary qualifications. Um, and what this then have is on the billing issue itself, we have erroneous billing going out to businesses, which is a deterrent for us in this metro. We have people being billed three to four hundred thousand rand a month for water infrastructure because most of the critical skills of the, in the water department, like engineers, about three percent in the five years have left this metro and they've gone to other municipalities because of political interference and pressure that we have in the metro. So, and also what this means is that we have a lot of water wastage because we don't have the necessary engineering skills in the metro to ensure that we detect the actual problem of how to replace infrastructure and where leakages should be done. Um, we've spoken to the mayor on numerous occasions of that. Um, we were fortunate enough that the previous internal auditor of the metro has become one of our councillors. And he's highlighted these facts to us. In the MPEG meeting, they've highlighted this issue. We've even had a petition uh, that we've handed in from residents. Um, but yet, uh, in uh, this metropolitan, you will find that there is non, uh, a dysfunctional petitions committee. Hence, most of the residents' issues are not heard to. Also, when it comes to the service delivery in, in this metro, our finances are in dire straits because we've let go of the most capable people that could have handled our finances. They've left the metro. And those are the skills that they also import from accounting services to assist them in setting up the financial books of the metro. And hence, we will find that we have a regression when it comes to the collection rate from which was supposed to be 92%, but now it's have gone down to 72%. We've got a bloated debtors book of 40 billion rand. 
And what it does, what it means then to this city, it means that 50% of the money we collect, which is in the debtors book, and as the Auditor General also highlighted this, that our debtors book is bloated, which means 50% annually is being written off. Um, this year alone, we've written off 500 million rand from indigent accounts in arrears, in electricity, in water, because of the exorbitant billing system that we have, because we don't have the necessary IT skill. So what is the solution to the billing system? Where is the ICT manager? That is a good question, because the ICT manager is on suspension, one. Um, they don't have the necessary people. So the, the way to fix this whole situation is to ensure that you see what is the skills that people have in the department. I don't, they don't, they hardly do a skills audit. The organogram is so open, you will see empty spaces of vacancies. At the moment, we've got 10 vacancies costing us 400K per month, um, which is not good. And then what then happens is, after you've done that skills audit, match the people to the correct position. See where there are vacancies. We've got students sitting at home with these skills that can sell these skills back to the metro um, as a skills development. Mm. I recently spoke to the ICT guys who set up this system, and they actually said to us that they are being given the job, and just when some clever Jack thinks he knows everything, the department asks the ICT specialist to leave and then they, you find the mess that we are in because they haven't mastered the skill yet. Mr. Gokwana, how, how does this help the residents of Buffalo City Metro? If you are not able to resolve these issues, if you are sitting there in council and uh, bickering about people standing on tables and howling and you know back and forth about issues that really don't matter to people who need services, how is all of this helping the residents? <coughs> Thanks, Angelo. Look, looks like in a, um, we, we may be getting a backlash as, as, as opposition now. Um, but the issue starts with the voters. It is not the crisis which starts in this term. It's an, been an existing and a piling up term. I mean, problem within the Buffalo City. And the residents, it's not us who have voted ANC into power here. And we have been getting a, sli a, a slight share of the voters, and it has been their choice to go for ANC. So what are you saying? The residents of Buffalo City deserve the services they not, get because I, they not, deserve the leaders that they voted into power. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm not saying they deserve that. But all I'm saying is that we, we cannot be asked to produce a different outcome from, the, from, from what they, they, they inputted. What we have as a mess across Eastern Cape is the question of putting in power, giving excessive power into the ANC, and they have decided to be arrogant because they have the numerical strength. They can do as they wish. So, so what does this mean? Are you saying the system is broken? And it is. as it stands right now, you are totally ineffective as opposition parties because the ANC does as it pleases. Exactly. That's very correct. Uh, look, 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 Sakina. For us to, to raise issues and speak about them, it's not enough. What is correct is that you must be able to raise an issue and it gets addressed. What is broken is not us as opposition parties, but the administration in all um, spheres of governance in the Eastern Cape. Let's be honest about that. Now, if, if, if voters, in fact, generally people are feeling that particular pressure now, across the country, not only in, the, in, 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 in Buffalo City, if they are not going to change voting in these elections, we're still going to sit with the same problems. Because whether we, corruption cases are identified, it doesn't matter. Secondly, like, you know, on the issue that you're raising, which is related to issue of consultants, is that the problem, again, is cadre deployment. We don't look at the capacity and the skill of the person needed into the post. We look at who is this person who want to place and what do we want to achieve. In fact, let me say we. 
the ruling party does that. As a result, now when the skill is needed, there is no option on their side is to outsource the service because they know or it, over time it has been proven by fact that this person has no capacity actually to deal with these particular issues. Okay, and of course uh, the electorate will make of this uh, what they will. Uh, let me get to the issues of uh, service provision and we heard about the roads, that's one that comes up very often, um, a water as well and electricity. Uh, the DA touched on the issue of the billing crisis. Uh, let's speak to that. Over 100 uh, informal settlements around uh, Buffalo City Metro. So while once will have empathy with the municipality for um, all of these informal settlements that may spring up from time to time that you may not have uh, budgeted for, that you may not have planned for, ultimately you need to deal with them. But let's park them just for the time being and let's talk to the residents who have been here who are in formal structures, formal settings, formal dwellings, how are you servicing them? Because they are complaining about the state of the roads. Let's start with that. Thank, thank you, Sakina. Sakina, the, the challenge that we have is maintenance because it's very, very important to, to maintain in order to sustain the asset that you have. If you fail to maintain it, the roads are going to develop potholes and it's gonna be expensive to service them. Second, sec second, secondly, Sakina, another thing is to make sure that you roll out services to, to communities that do not have services like, like roads because, because you, you, you know we are in what is called human settlements. You, you need intergovernmental approach in doing things because if for instance you, you, build, you build houses in a certain area, if there are no roads there, people will be affected. If, for instance, because some of the competencies belong to national, but the issue of intergovernmental relations, it's, it's very, very important. I'll make an example. In, 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 Rist, in, Rist, in, in an area called Ristin, we once built houses there. One of the complaints the, build, the people had, they, they, they said, we don't have scholar transport because it's a new area. We, we don't have police station. Now, when you, when you plan, it's very, very important that you involve other players like the national or provincial government for services that you could not provide. You, you know, in order to have a viable service. But that is basic. Yeah. So where is the town planner? It's, it's not rocket science. This is something that has to happen. It's not a nice to have. So why isn't it happening? They do happen. Those are the things that are not, as, as you correctly say, they are basic. They are not supposed to happen. But they do happen. They, 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 they do happen. It's, it's very, very important that uh, we always involve other role players so that we can, we, we don't have such, such, such problems. Uh, 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 let me uh, jump there to uh, Mr. Scotty from the UDM. In terms of the roads in this particular metro, how would you assess um, the state of the roads and how do you explain this to the residents? Oh, Sagin? It's very, very terrible, to be honest with you. I'll take an uh, example, you go to Ikunupi. It's one of the towns that are, are sitting those capitalists, especially me as they are staying in those places. Go to that place, there is a, across the street, it's, uh, it's their houses. 
And another side, just another side of the street is uh, informal settlements where our people stay. There are no roads there. There are no ablution facilities. To be honest with you, madam. So it's an ANC factor. Honestly speaking, you go to in Russia to an employment. Within, if it's not still being in money, it's been not still by the officials of the ANC. It will be stolen by our their branches inside our communities. You go to India, my English, oh ma'am. It's the ANC factor also there. They are employing themselves. You go each, each and everything. You go, as I told you, you go to there in Sandin. You go to that place and uh, there in uh, Orange Grove. It's a terrible thing. You go there and see our people, how they stay there. It's very, very, very terrible. You mm. cannot say they are staying in Buffalo City. You think that oh, they are staying somewhere in, in Transkai, in those rural areas. It's terrible. You can't say this in, in a metro. So when it comes to service delivery, ANC is failing us, honestly, dismal. Mm. Well, uh, yeah. Conclude your point? It's failing us dismal. Starting from job creation, they are failing. Our youth are not employed outside there. You have to be employed. If you are employed, you have to carry their card, your ANC card. If you are not belong to ANC, you cannot be employed. That's the mess that you are staying here, in, that you are facing here in this city, in Buffalo City. You are being failed by the ruling party in this municipality. All over. Well, I'll come to the other three gentlemen. Mr. Pagati, how do you respond to that, the issue of the state of the roads in this <coughs> metro? Well, uh, Sakina, thank you very much. Perhaps I should start by correcting one mistruth that was said here by the DA on the, on the writing of, of the 500 million indigent debt. Chantel makes a statement that is not true by suggesting that we have decided to write off the debt because we had an ICT challenge. That is not correct. This is an indigent debt that is not recoverable because it is the debt of the people in the townships that are not capable of paying. And as such, uh, the council decided that we should write off the debt because it is, it is irrecoverable. And the DA decided to descend from that decision. So I don't understand where is this thing coming from. Coming back to your question, we have 154 informal settlements in this city. We have a challenge of urban and rural divide. Now, now arising out of that is the inward migration of communities into the city looking for the better opportunities, employment, et cetera, et cetera. But when they arrive, <coughs> we then have a constitutional obligation to provide services to them, which we are doing. On the issue of the roads, we maintain the existing roads, both in terms of fixing the potholes and doing the overlay as and when <coughs> the, the, the condition of the roads necessitate that. Now, now, we have built new roads as well. We have tied the township roads we are also fixing the, the, the existing in, uh, roads infrastructure as a city. So this doom and gloom does not arise. We have just completed the R72 N2 connection connecting the, the, the uh, N2 and R72 with the intention to mitigate the effects of traffic congestion in the city centre. So when you say the doom and gloom uh, it does not arise, are you saying this is a figment of the imagination of the people of this metro when they complain about the state of the roads? Well, we may, we may not have covered all of them at once, but generally we have done well insofar as our observation is concerned in terms of road maintenance and as well as building new roads, both in the townships and in the urban. And that's your word and you're staying by it? I stay in the township in NU16. Uh, 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 one of your councillors, uh, fellow councillors, just said uh, the, uh, the roads are good where you live, but they're not so good where other citizens live. This guy is not even a councillor, so he doesn't know what he's talking about. So he doesn't know what he's talking about? It's not, not true. He's not a councillor. He doesn't know what he's talking so about. So it's not true. He doesn't know where I reside. Uh, so it's not true what he's saying? Certainly not true. 
Okay, not true. Well, we will, we will hear from our viewers later on and maybe they will tell us uh, what exactly the state of play is. We'll come back and we'll talk more about the issues here in the Buffalo City Metro uh, to talk to us about uh, what is going on and also some of the issues with regard to service delivery as we lead up to the November 1st poll. With that, it's back to studio.